this is the October 28th, 2021 Communications Committee meeting. Um, I will take roll call. Such as it is. <laughs> Jennifer <laughs> Lohman here. here. Um, next, we'll move to approval of the minutes. And um, I don't remember, maybe I've missed it, but the way that you put the the board doc it's link. a it's a, it's a link not a yeah. attachment that was a really uh, that made this entering the meeting a lot easier for me because i found the minutes right away without having to search for them so if we can do that with all meeting mm -hmm. invitations yeah that was awesome if we could teach whoever's doing that so i found the minutes right away and uh okay. well I, I, I did that at as the as the staff um, person i don't know if we can get other administrators to do that but i can certainly um, send an email if you teach them perhaps they'll learn <laughs> that, <laughs> yeah. um, and maybe dr scriven will say it's a it's a requirement and then perhaps they'll do it <laughs> let's see let's see how that goes yes um uh, has anyone had so any moved <laughs> Second, all in favor of approval of the minutes say aye. 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 The minutes are approved and we can move to the presentation by Kevin Kaufman. Okay. Are there any attendees? No attendees. Okay. Okay. Can you see my screen? Not yet. It's still loading. Now it's in. No, you're good. Okay. All right, good evening, everyone. Whoa, where's, where am I going here? My mouse is out of control. All right, um, good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to the October 28th, 2021 uh, Communications Committee meeting. We'll have two agenda items this evening. First is our search for uh, digital content specialists. I'll give you a high overview on how that's uh, coming along. And then we're gonna do a little deep dive into the Cheltenham School District Foundation and what they have been up to for the past year. And this is part of the communications committee meeting because I am the staff liaison to that board. So that falls under my, uh, my purview, just in case anyone was wondering. Okay, so uh, the digital content specialist, um, we're looking uh, to find the successor candidate to Dana Walker who left uh, in September, I believe. Uh, the the um, position was posted on the Cheltenham jobs portal for about a month from September 24th to October 22nd. I also took it upon myself to post it on Indeed, uh, uh, my personal Facebook page, my personal LinkedIn. Uh, as well as on the job portal at Pensper, which is Pennsylvania School PR Association. Uh, in addition to, there was one other place I put it. You said Penn State when you told yes, me. Yes, yes, I had it listed on the Penn State jobs portal, yes. So uh, Indeed yielded 52 applications, which I was pretty pleased with. Uh, 36 of them I, re I replied to as viable and asked them to, to apply on the jobs portal. So uh, not many of those uh, transferred into the jobs portal. Um, the, when the listing closed on October 22nd, we had seven applicants. I went through them yesterday and I've identified two people and I've asked HR to set up interviews with those two individuals. Uh, I would like this person to begin by January 1st, 2020. Uh, we're kind of in that weird period, but, you know, approaching Thanksgiving and Christmas and all of that. And I think January 1st would be a really good time to have this person begin just, you know, new year, new position, uh, you know, new, new, um, new beginnings, as they say. So I think that's it on the digital content specialist. Are there any questions on that? No. no? Okay. Super. Um, other than to say, um, you know, if the two candidates don't interview well, given the start date, it would be better to open it back up than to choose somebody just because that's who applied. I agree. We're having, we're having some bad experiences with hiring just the, because not many people applied and mm -hmm. we don't get very good candidates sometimes. So just yes. a lesson learned from recent experiences for, for what mm -hmm. it's worth. 
Well, it's worth a lot uh, what you say there, because that's exactly what I was thinking. Uh, there are two pretty good candidates, uh, one, of that, one of whom I actually am familiar with. Uh, okay. And so, you know, we'll, I'm, I'm hoping for the best. OK, so we'll see. We'll see how that uh, we'll see how that turns out. Hopefully, uh, interviews will begin next week. All right. Uh, all right. So Cheltenham School District Foundation. The foundation went through the pandemic uh, all the same as the rest of us. Uh, it impacted the, um, you know, the the amount, not the amount, the actual cycle that they go through. Um, to raise money each year. So fall 2020, uh, there was a decision to not offer the innovative educate, educator grants. Um, so spring 2021, um, we had uh, a lot of extra money in the kitty just because they didn't give the educator grants uh, and they didn't want to sit on a big pot of money. So spring 2021, they donated $1,500 to each school's principal account for, you know, end of year festivities, um, COVID related uh, re relief. I mean, like, you know, like, not f like fun stuff, not, you know, maybe stuff that wasn't bricks and mortar, but, you know, uh, above and beyond to make, uh, you know, the kids who were in school feel a little bit more comfortable there. Um, like it didn't go toward masks and you know hand sanitizer. Let's put it that way. Uh, also, in that time frame, uh, the dis the foundation donated uh, fifty one hundred dollars to families in the district who were suffering from food insecurity, uh, in concert with Cheryl Horsey and the Office of Student Services. Uh, in June, uh, this is one of my favorite events that we do each year because I just love seeing um, students. Uh, being rewarded for their hard work. Uh, uh, the foundation doled out 13 scholarships, totaling $11,000 to 19 members of the class of 2021. You can see the different, um, the different scholarships they have here. This has grown considerably. The number of scholarships and the money that they, um, that they donate has grown considerably in the past maybe five or six years. It used to be maybe five scholarships for $7,000. So it's growing. As you can see, we've, um, uh, we've added, th well, for this past year, they added three, set three new scholarships, uh, one for student activism, a memorial scholarship, and uh, a scholarship for PBL students. And you can see that's uh, in the right-hand corner. Um, we did, we did a, a campaign, a social media campaign uh, on each of our scholarship awardees. And we did uh, uh, graphics like this for each one, for each uh, scholarship that went out. So uh, also in June, um, this was a little out of the ordinary, but you know, it's the pandemic. So we tried something different. Um, and in following with the tradition that was uh, Cheltenham Dines on Blanc, which had been successful uh, for a couple of years, generally staged at Arcadia University, um, we threw what is called uh, Cheltenham Dines on Blanc with a twist. So this was, uh, everybody wore white, everybody brought their own food, but they were, um, they were together apart. Like there were um, parties happening uh, at community members' homes throughout the township. So it was pretty cool. We had um, maybe five or six different uh, spots <clears throat> excuse me, spots, 250 attendees, uh, and the event grossed nearly $7,000 from uh, ticket sales, wine pool raffle, and other donations. What was cool about this event is it was the first time that we used uh, the new software uh, that we had adopted for event planning called One Cause. So we were able to do all of our marketing, all of the ticketing, all of the donations, all of that through one portal. Uh, instead of using Excel sheets and you know whatever 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 other means uh, we used to use to track this sort of stuff, so it's all in one place now. Uh, the board is pretty much up to speed on how to use that. We used it, in fact, for the event that happened this past weekend, which I will cover uh, in a moment. So June 2021. Oh, we're right there. Okay, October 2021. This past weekend. The foundation hosted Foundation Fest uh, in lieu of a larger, less pandemic-friendly food truck jamboree. Uh, 
that was uh, canceled this year, by the way. I guess I should have mentioned that. Uh, and uh, by all accounts, it was a, a great success. It was held at the home of a community member. Um, I can't remember their first names, but it's the same family that owns the Ways Restaurant and Brewery in Glenside. Uh, and they made some uh, lovely donations to the cause as well. There were about 75 attendees and it grossed about $3,300 from ticket sales and other donations. And you can see there's some photos of the festivities. So mm -hmm. I think uh, moving forward, it's gonna, we're gonna do, um, we're gonna call them micro events uh, instead of these large, um, you know, onerous kind of events. Um, because there's, you kind of lose that, uh, that friend raising feel when you have these huge events and, you know, board members are running around running raffles and doing the dunk tank. And, you know, these events are a little more manageable, a little bit more um, friend centric. Uh, and, you know, I've been saying all along, we need to raise friends before we can raise funds. So uh, this is part of uh, a charm, a charm offensive if you will, uh, on the foundation's behalf to try to get out there a little bit more, have people get to know who the foundation is. And so um, I believe this is our last slide. Uh, you know, also this month, uh, we announced the return of the Innovative Educator Grants, which, uh, as I mentioned, we did not do last year due to the pandemic and, you know, people not being in the buildings and, you know, all, all the stuff that goes along with that. Two grant cycles have been announced. One is for January to May. It's a smaller grant. I believe uh, it's for $500. And the window, as I mentioned, is June through May. So it's quick hitter projects, uh, not too expensive. And then kind of concurrently to that, uh, they are opening up a grant cycle for spring into uh, the next school year. That'll be for up to $1,500, which is a little more in line with the traditional edu innovative educator grants. Uh, and those projects should be completed between 2022 and uh, September 2022 and May 2023. So that's, so we're back on uh, the normal grant cycle uh, with the uh, innovative educator grants. Uh, I have a video here uh, that we used to promote the grants. Um, it's about three minutes long and it's, I mean, I'll play it. You guys can tell me if you want me to, to complete it, but um, basically says what has, what I've said um, that's on the screen here. Uh, and it's Pam Henry and Betsy Conway, two former Cheltenham educators. And I'll hit play and you guys can let me know. They filmed this in someone's living room. I put the bumpers on and the uh, and the effects. Hi, I'm Pam Hart, Shellingham parent and former principal of Myers Elementary School. Hi, I'm Betsy Conway, lifelong resident and Cheltenham educator for 36 years. We want you to become very familiar with our Cheltenham School District Foundation. Some of you are new to Cheltenham, and this following information is a great reminder for everyone. Our foundation is a 501c3 nonprofit organization founded in 1992. Its purpose is to support innovative instruction for Cheltenham students. We raise funds several ways, food truck jamboree, dining on Blanc, donations from community members, and our first foundation festival will be held on Sunday, October 24th, 12 to three. Join us for beer, brats, pretzels, and fun to kick off our 21-22 school year. And very important, we raise funds through generous donations made by our teachers, staff, administrators, through payroll deduction. That's you. <laughs> Thanks for all of you who are donating now and who will be donating in the future. Our primary work is to support staff and students of the school district in two ways. Each year, we allocate $25,000 for educator and staff innovation grants, and we also award scholarships to high school seniors at Sheltenham High School. Last year, the COVID guidelines prevented us from holding our annual events and offering traditional grants. 
However, we were able to donate $5,000 to support Sheltenham families that experience food insecurity. And we also donated $1,500 to each school to enhance students' accessibility to virtual instruction. I'm delighted to also share that we awarded more than $11,000 of scholarships to high school seniors. We are thrilled that children are back in school and we are committed to continuing our support of innovative instructional practices that have made our district so special. With that in mind, we will be prompting two grant cycles this school year. The first one is a shortened grant cycle that will allow staff members to apply for up to $500 for projects that will be completed between January and May of this school year. As always, we invite all staff members to apply for a grant. Recognizing the toll that the pandemic has had on our students and their families, we strongly encourage staff members to consider submitting grant applications that focus on social emotional learning, mental health, and hands-on experiences. We know that all of you are working diligently to meet the needs of our students, and the foundation wants to do all that we can to support your efforts. Applications for this first round of grants will be available the week of October 18th and will close on Monday, November 15th. Grant recipients will be identified um, and notified by December 1st. And if you're interested in applying for a year-long grant for the 22-23 school year, look for grant applications in March. Please know that a follow-up email will be sent to all staff members in the next week or so with additional information, time timelines, and the actual application. We want to end by thanking each one of you for all that you have done and continue to do for our students. We look forward to a great year and reading your grant applications. Okay. Great. Okay, so that is the story with the foundation. I, um, and uh, that, is the, that is the end of our presentation. Do you have any questions? Yeah, I just have one comment about the micro events. I, I appreciate them. I think that's a really good way to get people to get to be friends. But the one worry I have is okay. that because of their size, there may be a sense among people who aren't part of the clique that they're not going to feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. That a bigger event is more inviting if you don't know the person inviting you, if that makes sense. And I'm just throwing that out there as a just feedback. It does make sense. And the board is aware of that uh, perception. Uh, so what they're doing, they, they're going to have different sorts of events. Like this was a, you know, an Oktoberfest thing. I believe there's going to be something, uh, you know, bags and bags and bingo or, you know, beers, bags and bingo or something along those lines. There's going to be different events for different types of folks. So we'll be able right. to, you know, hit as many different um, pockets of individuals as possible. And, and I'm part of the click, I hope. <laughs> and, and I didn't get a lot of the, of the like, I, I saw it a couple of places, but um, like, how was it communicated? Did it come by email? Well, or... I, sent it, I, I sent the invitation to each of the board members. Okay. But since it, it's an alcohol, since it was an alcohol event, I couldn't include it in the news share or Got anything it. along those lines. But it was on Facebook on the on the foundations page, and I did share it um, to a bunch of local um, local pages. You know, like Elkins yeah. Park happenings and and all of those uh, those things as well. Uh, but it, mainly, it, it wasn't necessarily driven by uh, by e-marketing so much as uh you know pressing the flesh and you know calling people making direct connections with folks you know um calling you know talking to somebody talking to your neighbor or whatever um about coming out and and seeing what the the events are all about you know friend it friend raising before the the friend raising if you will um so jenny did you go 
to uh, I had a blood. ticket for the Oktoberfest, but I was I was sick. Oh, for the okay. weekend, so I didn't make it. I did go to the um dinner on Blanc um mm -hmm. at Pam Hart's house actually. And it was really okay. fun. Um and I personally enjoy those size events more than the the larger events. Um just to, I find it easier to talk to people and kind of meet people I don't know at the smaller events, but it was, um, but I also appreciate the other kind of point of view about it, but it, um, I really enjoyed it. I was glad, I'm glad I didn't, I was wondering actually how much money that event had raised. So glad to see that it was successful. Yes. I, I think I actually had family obligations both times. It wasn't that I wasn't part of the clique. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But, uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, I, 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 I'm very sorry I missed both. Um, well, we hopefully were, there'll be, some, hopefully there'll be some more events. We Kevin, were indeed you, visiting Adam for the first time. So, a, a, can I ask you a question about? Um, the, do you remember? Were you here when they, the union, I think it was, and the PTO, maybe UPG, used to do the tap awards? Mm -mm. I, I Adam got that award. And yes, yeah, so uh, I, I can look back at the, into who sponsored that and perhaps resurrect it. I agree with you. Yeah, because my, my daughter actually got one of them in fourth grade and it was a really nice event, um, really got to celebrate kids who might not otherwise have been celebrated and um, recognize them for their hard work. And I, I think they got there might have been like fifty dollars associated with it too, and a little plaque. Um, but it was really you know, we had like a little luncheon. It was just a really, really nice event. Um, I, I have this vague notion that it was UPG and and maybe CEA, but I don't know. I can't remember for a fact. But just curious if that would be something that the foundation might be interested in. In uh, I can, I can run. well, well, um, if. Mr. Fishbein can find some information. I can certainly um, give it a shot. Or, I mean, I can just email CEA. I can get with the UPG um, board. I mean, if, if it's something you'd really like me to pursue, I don't know anything about it. I'm not. I'm yeah. Not about I, it. In fact, I, I'm positive it was UPG and CEA because it was, it stood for Teacher and Parent Award. Okay. The, the TAP Award. Um, I bet you Jack Kelly would know, would remember it, because um, the bunch of teachers at Glenside were very involved with it. Okay. Any um, idea? Any idea why it went away? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm not finding anything in my email about it, um, and I don't erase email. So uh, <laughs> wait, actually, all email. Hold on. I mean, real quick, I'll just search one more time and then I'll be able to. It's too, too common a word. Yeah, I mean, the person who would probably have the most knowledge about it, it would be Cindy Goldberg. Who mm, okay. Not here anymore, but is, you know, easily findable. On social yes, media. she is. Yes, she is. Yeah, and, and and thank you for the presentation. Oh, oh, I I was. We now have a new way to report out from these meetings. Okay, that is better than the former method. And um, I was filling out the report as the meeting was going on. And the um, the last item is next month's meeting will be on blank night at blank time. And the and the next meeting came up at, as you know scheduled on the third Thursday is Thanksgiving. So, right, um, it's the uh, let me just double, let me double check for you. I know it's that it's that um, previous Thursday. I don't know the it is. date. Okay, it's, it's currently still on the calendar as on Thanksgiving. So, so I there can say go. it's the previous Thursday. No, it's on the it's the calendar here says it's the eighteenth. And the count the school district calendar. Where oh, where are you looking? I was looking at the board's calendar. Oh, okay. So All right. I will. I will have to change that. Yes, the next uh, communications committee meeting is the eighteenth okay. of November. 
Now, we do have um, a special guest. Dylan Nelson is here, our student, uh, student government rep. Um, Dylan, if you would like to say anything or have any questions or whatever, just put your hand up and I can uh, give you an open mic if you would like. Okay. Thanks for coming, Dylan. <laughs> yeah, hi, Dylan. <laughs> nope. Okay. okay. Oh wait, we've got a. Uh, I'm good, but thank you for letting me attend. Oh yeah, these meetings are open to the, these the meetings public. are open to the public, Dylan. So whenever you, uh, whenever you want to pop in, we'd love having special guests yeah. at this meeting. Bring your friends and family. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> okay. Very good. Well, that's, that's all I have. That's that's all I have. Do you have anything else for the good of the order? Uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you.